Hey everyone, uh, so today I want to talk about soldering irons. I get a lot of questions about what is a good iron to buy, where, how much should I spend, where should I start out, why does one cost more than the other, and I want to kind of discuss that a little bit. Um, it's a pretty important investment uh, when you're you know, trying to build electronic circuits and stuff. It's probably one of the most important tools you'll buy uh, next to you know, maybe like a multimeter or something like that. And prices go all over you know from less than ten dollars up to like eight hundred you know so crazy money um, there's two basic kinds of irons there's pencil style and then there's soldering stations uh, if you're just you know living in an apartment or you've got a dorm room or something like that or you've got a small workspace you don't have a lot of room pencil iron you know is probably what you're going to be looking at using um, now there's two different kinds of pencil irons. There's ones that have temperature adjustment and ones that don't. Uh, this kind of you know inexpensive $15 or less uh, pencil iron uh, that doesn't have any temperature adjustment. Typically they have these little thread end tips that are kind of cheese ball. Don't ever buy an iron like this. I mean, you know, they're bad. They, uh, you know, yeah, they'll solder wires together and stuff like that, but for crying out loud, I mean, for like $10 more or even $5 more, you know, you can get something that's a lot better quality. You know, friends don't let friends use these things. I mean, like I said, yeah, you, you can solder stuff together with it, but it'll just frustrate you to no end. Uh, you know, I couldn't believe how much better everything worked once I got rid of that and, and started using a real soldering iron. Um, so next up, <laughs> you get the... Uh, same kind of style, but they have temperature adjustments. They have a little turny knob there. Um, this is a 30 watt iron, a uh, Zitronic 258. Uh, Adafruit sells this for like 22 bucks. Um, now with this kind, this has a little screw on job in here and you can replace the tip. You know, so the tips on these are a lot higher quality uh, than the other super cheapy style and that's part of the reason why they work so much better usually they have a ceramic element inside of them and you know for the, uh, cav the for the casual user these work pretty well you know I mean if you're only soldering stuff you know a few times a month or a year or whatever you're just soldering some LEDs you know to your Arduino and just soldering some pins on there or maybe some servo connectors or something you know it'll work just fine for that you know uh, if you want something a little bit better than this in a pencil iron, Hakko makes one called the FX600 that's a 74 watt iron, so more than you know, twice the power of this one. It sells for about you know, 40 bucks or so, and that's a really good, uh, nice, it's a little, quite a bit nicer than this one is, um, but I would definitely go that route, you know, if that's an option for you. Uh, the other option is for is to get one like this and this is a uh, cordless soldering iron that Hakka makes it's a FX901 this uses you know double-a batteries so I've got nickel metal hydride batteries in there say the run times two hours I, I found it to be a little bit shorter than that um, there we go but um, this one has a cartridge style heater pulls right out it's a heater the actual heating elements built right into the tip um, and I got this as something I could have when I just went to work out on something in the garage if I was working on a costume or something and I didn't want to take my soldering station with me I could just grab this thing run out there if I had a loose wire or something like that and fix it right then and there um, this is not a substitute for either a pencil style iron or a proper soldering station um, it's a good quick fix type tool and I was actually shocked at how well this thing works um, you know most of the portable style irons you know I mean, most of them are pretty pretty much junk but this thing actually I was really quite surprised you know I thought oh it's gonna be a big pile of crap but no it actually does work I forget how much it sells for but they're pretty cheap um, again if you do need something that's portable like that where you don't have to plug it in or anything you know, it's something good to have in your toolbox. Okay, so after pencil irons, uh, you get into soldering stations. And with the soldering station, the power unit is separate from the handle. All right, and so the handles are typically quite a bit slimmer, cords are a lot thinner, so you don't have the tension of that cable, you know, when you're trying to solder on delicate stuff. Um, you know, using this guy, 
you know, big heavy power cord, it gets a little fatiguing, you know, when you're trying to solder stuff all day long. The other big difference is if you look at the distance from the tip to the handle, it's a lot shorter on a lot of these guys. So you have a lot, you know, if you're trying to hold it like this versus like this, you have much, much finer control over something. Um, now, you know, with these types of soldering stations, they run the whole range, you know, price-wise. There's, you know, you can get some for, you know, cheap Chinese Hakko 936 knockoffs for under 20 bucks, all the way up to, you know, geez, seven, eight hundred dollars, you know, for super, super high-end ones. Honestly, you know, anything above, I think, probably 300 is kind of, you know, you're getting into really the point of diminishing returns. You know, there isn't anything that either one of these two stations pretty much won't solder with the right tip on it. Um, I had this AOU one for quite a few years, this 2900. Um, and it worked great at first, but then, you know, the build quality isn't so great on it. You know, handle comes loose. Um, the tips on these aren't, aren't the best quality compared to, you know, Metcal or Pace tips or, or Hako tips. Um, you know, it worked fine for a while, but then, you know, when you started soldering heavy joints over and over again, it would just kind of shut itself off. Um, it just didn't really work that great. If you're going to spend more than forty dollars, you know, for a for a higher end pencil iron, spend a hundred bucks and get a Hako F FX 888D. Um, that's pretty much the probably the best new soldering station you can get for a hundred bucks or less. Um, other than that, you know, you can get used ones like these used Metcal stations. This is a STSS. Uh, PS2E. Um, these come up all the time on eBay. Um, so a lot of times, you know, if you're patient, you can find one of these with the iron for under a hundred bucks. And for under a hundred bucks, that's a good deal. Uh, Metcal tips are a little bit expensive. They, you know, they get to be like $25 on up sometimes. Um, you know, I found this Pace one on eBay for 110 bucks. This one goes for 260 new. A new Metcal MX station, which is the one that kind of replaced this, goes for 500. And, and like I said, a lot of people are like, "Whoa, Metcal, best thing ever made." Yeah, but I've used these two side by side, and I'll show you a second here. And the the thermal performance of both of these is identical. You know, they they both are wonderful soldering stations. You can't go wrong with either one. The difference is, this one is adjustable temperature, and with Metcal stations, the whoops, sorry, wrong one. With uh, Metcal irons, the the cartridge is a fixed temperature, so there is no temperature adjustment on this, and it's due to the way the the system is designed. You know, it'll... and you know, some people like that, some people don't. My my belief is, hey, if I can get an adjustable temperature one um, that has the same thermal performance, why wouldn't I? You know, it's. You know, just makes it more user friendly. Why wouldn't I do that? Um, some people, like I said, they'll argue, ah, it's not the same. Yeah, it's the same. And 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 I'll show that here. So just to show you the time difference in uh, soldering irons and heating up and all that kind of stuff. So I just plugged this one in about 15 seconds ago. And we'll see how long it takes for it to get warm enough to Feel like playing the Jeopardy music. Still waiting. Getting there, and there we go. Okay, so not exactly quick. So I was able to solder a penny to a small board like this using this iron, you know, so it's got some decent 
thermal capacity, um, but cannot get it to solder onto a large ground plane like this. You know, just not going to happen. Um, that's why I say if you're going to, if you want something with a little bit better capacity, um, get the Hako FX600 rather than than this one. For the hobbyist, if all you're doing is soldering a few connectors or something on an Arduino, this will work great. So here is the pace. And pretty much ready to go, just like that. So this was kind of a test that people used to say, you know, with Metcal, take the iron and take a large piece of copper and you know, try and solder a penny to it. And he said, oh, you know, you can't do it with anything other than a, than a Metcal iron. Well, you know, proof is in the pudding and uh, I have to say that that pretty much disagrees. And there you go, all the way around. So, yeah. Thermal capacity, not a problem with the pace iron. And so this, the pace iron was set at 700 degrees. So, you know, exact same size chisel tip as the Metcal iron, not a problem. And I can put my fingers on the rest of the board. So it's only put, pumping that heat right into that area. I mean, it's warm, but it's not hot. So, you know, trying to solder something like this with this is a no-go. It, it's just not going to happen. Okay, so here's the Metcal iron. And it's good to go. Let's grab another penny with that guy. Let's make sure I've got good conduction there. And this board's already just a touch worn. Let's get my hands out of the way. See, it's pretty much taking just as long as that paste unit did to solder on there. Nope, oh, it's still a little sticky in one spot, but there you have it. All right, so there you have it. Uh, I think, you know, if you're on a really tight budget, one of these temperature controlled pencil irons, you know, I think it's a good a good buy. You know, for most simple projects, it'll work just fine. Uh, if you want the more powerful one, you know, the FX600, the Hako, it's 40 bucks, so it's a little bit more, but it's a good investment. Um, if you have the space and you have the money, then by all means, get, get a decent soldering station. Um, I think with the less expensive Chinese ones, you kind of get what you pay for. You know, I could say that with all of them, but I mean, especially with those, you know, they're if one is really, really cheap, it's really cheap for a reason. You know, I just wouldn't expect it to last that long. 
the Metcal, the STSS, PS2E like this, used, you know, if you can find one on eBay for under a hundred bucks, it's an awesome buy. It's a great iron, does everything well. Um, the tips for them, again, are a little bit pricey. Uh, Pace ones, if you can find them used, also very, very good buy. New, the model that replaces the MX500, sells for 500 bucks, which is flipping bananas, um, considering this one goes for about half that. So, you know, that's awfully hard, hard to swallow, you know. I mean, I can't see the performance being twice as good as this thing. You know, clearly, you know, soldering pennies to a board, it clearly isn't. So, you know, uh, this is a wonderful iron. Can't go wrong with it. Um, with either one of the, like the Metcal and the Pace irons, the big advantage of a lot of these guys too is that they have an enormous number of tips available. I know Pace has like 134 tips for this one iron. I don't know what the heck all of them are used for, but you know, if I want it there, you know, they've got it. Um, I can get uh, tips directly from Pace too, so I don't have to go hunting all over the internet for them. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'll put some links in below for different irons. If you guys have any questions, comments, hate mail, whatever, send it on over. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.